I am an insignificant carnation, but I was born into grand conditions. It was my destiny that I would be part of a murder of a man that would change the nation. That man was William McKinley. McKinley put his faith in the luck of red carnations. This man of great influence would go nowhere without his carnation. At his most critical moment, he placed his faith in me. I found myself staring out into a shifting land. A land I could once define by its fixed familiarity was now surging by, becoming unrecognizable in its transformation. McKinley was privately rehearsing the speech he would be giving at the train's destination. A place I heard spoken about with much excitement by those aboard the train. The Pan American Exposition. This was a celebration of the future. Listening to McKinley's words, I found myself growing anxious to see the wonderments he eulogized. He spoke of new changes. Advances in machinery that guaranteed a better world. When we arrived, I felt disappointed. I was left in that dark train car and I feared my journey would end there. But the following day, I was met with good fortune. McKinley's hand hovered over the basket and finally settled on me. The sounds of merriment and festivity surrounded us as we left the train and approached the exposition that day. The affair was a magnificent spectacle, far beyond what I had imagined. We moved along streets crowded with curious observers. They too were here to see the future. We arrived in the middle of the massive temple of music since McKinley was scheduled to greet visitors to the exhibition here. When the doors opened, crowds of people rushed towards us. I feared being crushed. One by one, people shook McKinley's hand thanking him and praising him. This was a man the people seemed to hold in high regard. This continued for some time.
until a little girl stepped forward. Her shy voice was barely heard through the noise of the organ. She politely asked McKinley for a token to show her friends. The room seemed to fall into silence as he slowly lowered himself to the ground, and to my surprise, he removed me from his jacket. He gently placed me into her tiny hands, and her face lit up with a smile. The girl held me with such pride. We walked away from McKinley, when suddenly two shots and screams resonated from the ceiling of the temple. The crowd fell into panic. We looked back to McKinley, but I had difficulty seeing what was happening. I glanced through the crowd at McKinley being carried out. Anger, outrage, and fear traveled through the crowd. As night fell, the exposition lit up into a marvelous show of illumination. It became impossible to know where the stars ended and the lights began. The setting that had been so full of promise earlier that day was replaced by uncertainty.